Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. If you have your moms with you all, you know that it's just a blessing to still have mom here. This week was a challenging week for me, and I thank all of you all for your prayers as I went through surgery on Wednesday. I literally felt the prayers of the righteous, and I'm telling you, it was the prayers that brought me through. They wouldn't even let Pastor Davis in the hospital. So this is one time I had to go it alone. But God was in the hospital, and God was right there with me. And I thank and praise God for bringing me through. Our scripture this morning is coming from the scripture that brought me through, and that's Psalm 91. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Praise God. Verse 14 says, the Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with long life and give them my salvation. Praise God for Psalm 91. The song that God has placed on my heart is Through It All. I've had tears and sorrow, but God has brought me through it all. Trust in Jesus. 
I've learned to trust in God through it all. He brought me through it all. I've learned to depend upon His word. Have you learned? Have you learned? to trust in God, to trust in Jesus through it all? Have you learned to depend on him and take God at his word? Through it all, I've learned, I've learned to trust God through it all. Regardless of what has come, what has partaken, we must learn to, to trust God through it all. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for this, another privilege, another chance, another opportunity to come before you, Lord. We thank you for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you for a great testimony. We thank you, Lord, for watching over us in spite of us, watching over us in spite of our meanness, our cruelties, watching over us and, and keeping us in our right mind. We thank you, Lord, for another privilege, another chance just to worship you. Now, Lord, we pray that you bless us as we come to hear your word. Bless that your word will fall on good soil. That your word, Father God, would be moved and move people in a mighty way. Bless us, Father God, as we come today that, that we will hear your word and benefit from your word. That your word will go forward and old habits will be thrown away and old burdens will be rolled away. Bless us now that your word will be powerful, Father God, that people will understand your word very clearly and understand you, Father God. We pray, Father God, that your word, Father God, will be something that we will look to in times of trouble and in time of peace. Now, Lord, bless me. Rescue me from me. Forgive me for my sins. Bless me, Father God, to honor you as the Holy Spirit leads. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. I've learned to depend upon his word. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Why don't we thank God for Sister Carolyn Davis. Thank God for her, for blessing her and uh, blessing her to be with us one more time. For blessing her to be a soldier for the Lord. Yes, yeah, she had many excuses on today not to be in church. But she's in church. And I pray and I hope that you're in church also. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for, for keeping us and, and, and praying for us as we move through this time in our lives. Let's look at Exodus chapter 2. We'll be dealing with verses 1 through 10. Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10 is where we are today. Let me take this moment to thank those who are mothers, those who have served as mothers, and those who hope to be mothers. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for <clears throat> what you have done uh, for young people throughout this world. Thank you so much. There's nothing like mother's love. There's nothing like, like those who have nourished us. Even though they were not our biological mothers, they nourished us. And I just want to say thank you <clears throat> for what you have already, already done. Our focus today is, is Exodus chapter 2. Verse, chapter 2, verses 1 through uh, 10. I will read verses 8 through 10 in your hearing. And I start in the middle of the, pro the, middle of the, the story and back, back you up into it. Just these three verses, if you don't mind. Exodus chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. When you found it, you will discover these words. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him, and the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she became his son. So she called his son name, called his name Moses, saying, because I drew him out of the water. Honey, if you would swipe it that way, it will show. So our, our subject today, our subject today 
Our subject today is our subject today is the wise mother. Our subject today is the wise mother. The wise mother. The wise mother. Let me just say to you that there are mothers all over this land that we are giving respect to today that has shown themselves to be wise. They are wise mothers because they look out for their children. Let me just first begin by honoring those who are biological mothers who are making a difference in young people's lives. And then I want to honor those of you who are not biological mothers, but you have adopted some child, whether you have gone through the legal system or not, but you have taken on the role of a mother. You see, every child, every person needs a mother figure and heals in her life. Every child needs somebody who has nourishing power. Let me say to those of you who do not have a mother, those of you who do not have a mother, let me just say to you, uh, uh, thank God for, for blessing you with the one that you've had because he has given you an opportunity to see his love at work. And those of you who don't have children, who do not have children and wish they had, let me just say to you, adopt somebody else's children. Always support young people because, because you never know who you're supporting. And then the God of hope, the God of strength, the God of power will always see you through these times. Our Sunday school lesson dealt with the fact that nothing is too hard for God. We have to trust God even in our tough situations. Then there's those of you who have mothers that were not wise mothers. Forgiveness is on the table today. Forgive your mother for what she has put you through and what she has not given. And those of you who are mothers who have not participated well with your children, if you're still breathing, if you're still living, it's not too late. You can still make a difference in the lives of young people. Today, I call your attention to Exodus chapter 2, where we have Moses just being born. If you look at Exodus chapter 1, the Bible says there was a king that had been on the throne now in this date, there's a king that is on the throne who knew not Joseph. That is important to note because, you know, uh, Jacob had 12 children and Joseph became and he rose to the level of second person in charge. So he had favor with the king. Joseph had favor with the king and Joseph was able to do great things for the Israelites because he had favor with the king. Let me just tell you, when you have favor with the king, it's better than having money. When you have favor with the king, it's better than having applause. When you have favor with the king, you can do some things that others can't do, and you can get away with some things that others can't get away with. But in this text, in Exodus chapter 1, the author tells us that there rose a king that took over Egypt that knew not Joseph. In other words, he didn't know what the king had done for Joseph. He didn't know how the king was able to allow Joseph to bless the Hebrew people. He knew not Joseph. As a matter of fact, he didn't want to know anything about the Hebrews. And when we pick up in chapter 1, we will find out that he looked to kill all the Hebrew children boys. And he wanted to kill them at birth. He wanted to get rid of them at birth. He he wanted, he had, he had decreed, he had ordered the midwives of the Egyptians to go and as the Hebrew women had babies. What I want you to do is kill them, throw them in the Nile River, get rid of them. If they are boy child children, get rid of them. 
If they happen to be girl children, let them live. Let me just share with you today. We, 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 we're here at a time where there's a king that knows not Joseph. <laughs> we live at a time where there's a president that knows not God. And he would have those who are not on his side, those who are not the same color, those who don't have the right last name, he would have them executed. He would have them killed at birth. I want to say to you, but there's hope. Because as long as there's a wise mother on the scene, children will always be protected. So we, we see this king, this king who has said that if there's a boy baby born, get rid of him, kill him. But many of the midwives chose not to get rid of these Hebrew children. These midwives chose not to get rid of these Hebrew children. They allowed the children to live. And when we pick up on chapter 2, we will find out that this woman, this wise mother who married a Levite, who also was from the Levite tribe, this woman bore a son in verse number 2. She bore a son. She bore a son. She already had a little girl, but she bore a son. And when she bore the son, she realized that this child was beautiful. She realized that the child was beautiful. Let me just put a pin right here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the child is beautiful or not. You ought to spare the child's life. It doesn't matter if the child is beautiful or comes out looking good. You ought to take care of the child anyway. Matter of fact, if, uh, if mama had felt that way about me, I wouldn't be around now because the, the story is told and is told oftentimes by my younger brothers and sister. They oftentimes tell the story that when I was born, I was hairy everywhere. They tell the story that I was the ugliest baby that they had ever seen. They tell the story that I was so ugly that no one wanted to be around me but my mama. Now, I don't know how they knew because I'm the oldest, and I don't know how they knew because they wouldn't even over the scene. But if, if mama had felt that way about me because I wasn't beautiful, then she would have let me die. But we find in the text this woman didn't let her child get killed. She had a baby. It was a Hebrew baby. It was a male child. And the king had decreed that any male children born, the, the, the midwives were to kill them. The text declares that this woman, this woman had favor with the midwives. The midwives didn't kill their baby, nor did they push him out in the Nile Sea. Uh, but what they did do is let the baby live. The text declared that this woman hid the baby. She hid this male child for three months. She hid him for three months, and when she could not hide him again, when she could not hide him any longer, the Bible says that she took a basket of bulrush, an ark of bulrush, and dabbed it with asphalt and pitch. She put the baby in the barrel. In, in, she put the baby in the ark. And she laid it in the reeds by the river. And she put it on the river's bank. This woman, this woman took her child. She had given him life. But she took her child and she laid him in a basket. She laid him in a basket with bull, made of bulrushes. She put him in a basket, surrounded the basket with asphalt and pitch. She put him in the reeds by the bank of the river. And his sister was watching from afar off. Because she wanted to see what would happen to her little brother. Let me just share with you today. My first point to you is a wise mother gives life. A wise mother gives life. So the Bible says that this baby was born to her. 
She gave him life. But let me tell you, any woman can give life for the most part. It doesn't make you a wise mother because you give life. It makes you a mother because you give life. But when you are a wise mother, you're able to not only give life, but you're able to give a living. She gives life to him in verse number two. But she goes on and she gives him a living in verse number three. Wise mothers, wise mothers give them living. And she could have, she really could have been selfish about it and say, I'm not giving up my baby for nothing. My next point to you is not only does the wise mother give life, not only does the wise mother give a living, a wise mother is not stuck on herself when it comes to her child. A wise mother would rather see her child live than take a chance on her child dying. A wise mother, a wise mother would do whatever it takes to save her child. A wise mother, see a wise mother doesn't show up when the getting gets good. A wise mother will stick in there when the things are not well. So she puts him on in this basket right next to the river's banks, sister follows. So the sister watches to see what's going to happen. And God has a divine destiny for all of us. The sister watches from a distance. The Bible says in verse number five of Exodus chapter two, the Bible declares that the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe in the river. You see, Pharaoh wanted to kill. Yeah, he wanted to kill all the male boys, all the male babies, all the boys that were born to these Hebrew women. But see, Pharaoh had already put them in slavery. He made them build stuff. He, he made them take care of the empire. He made them take care of his kingdom at no wages. He took care of his place through them and through their slave labor. But when his daughter came to bathe in the river, she came to bathe in the river and she noticed something in the river. The text declares that, that when the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her handmaid walked across the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her handmaid to get it. Let me just share with you. God will protect your children if you have God's business. God has a way of protecting us. God has a way of blessing us when a wise mother looks out for her children. So this story, this story is is a, a story of preservation. This story, this, this story is a story of how a mother preserves her child, preserves his life, preserves his living, and finally preserves his legacy. The Bible says, the Bible says that, that she got to a point where she sent her handmaid to get the baby. Pharaoh's daughter. The daughter of the Pharaoh that's looking to kill the Hebrew children. The daughter of the Pharaoh that said that if the boy is born by the Hebrews, kill him. Now here is Moses. He is, he is born a male of a Hebrew woman. And Pharaoh's daughter sends her handmaid to go and get this baby. So she had compassion on him because the baby started crying. Let me tell you, God will have your baby to cry at the right time. Amen. Pastor Isidore Edwards talk about, talks about the fact that he used to get up and, and jog early in the morning. And one morning he got up and he went jogging and he left his keys in the house. So he came back to the house and he knocked on the door and he couldn't get in the door. He ran around, he knocked on the window, he couldn't get in the window. 
he began to take a stick and beat upon the bottom of the house, but his wife never heard him. But lo and behold, when the baby cried, he says his baby started to cry and his wife jumped right up and he, she answered the call of the baby. Yes, when, when a baby cries, if you are a real mother, you can't stand the crying. So Pharaoh's daughter, with this motherly instinct, heard the baby crying and the Bible says that she had compassion. Verse number six, she had compassion on him. She noticed also that this is a Hebrew baby. She knew it was a boy. She knew it was a Hebrew because Hebrews would be circumcised the eighth day. This baby is three months old. She noticed this baby was a Hebrew baby. She knew that this baby should have been dead three months ago, but God gave her compassion. Let me just share with you. God has a way of blessing those who are close to the king to have compassion on those that the king would want to kill. Let me just share with you this morning. I want to share with you that she noticed that it was a Hebrew baby. The baby was crying. She had compassion and she didn't take the baby to her daddy but rather, she, she put out an effort to save the baby. Look at the text. Exodus chapter 2, I'm running by verse number 6. It says that she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. This is a male child that should have been killed, but she didn't set out to get him killed. Rather, the sister of Moses. The sister of the baby went to Pharaoh's daughter and asked the question, since you know that it's a Hebrew baby, would you like for me to go get one of the Hebrew women to nurse it? This little girl, this little girl said, uh, since you know that it's a Hebrew baby, would you like for me to go and get a Hebrew woman to take care of it? Verse number eight, it says, and Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. I just want to let you know that God has a way of orchestrating things where the blessed can be blessed. Where the blessed can really be blessed to a point that you can scream, I am highly favored. Look at, look at how the story goes. And Pharaoh's daughter said to, to her in verse number eight, go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. The mother couldn't come out and show herself. The mother wasn't able to say, that's my baby. But the daughter of that mother played a pivotal role in the life of her brother by going to Pharaoh's daughter and asking, do you want me to get his Mother is what she was really saying. Do you want me to go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse him? Mm -hmm. And look at what happens after that. Verse number nine. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, this is to the mother. This is the mother of the baby that was put in bulrush. That was put in the ark. That put in the basket. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to the mother, said to her, Take this child away and nurse it for me. Oh, good God Almighty. Not only, not, only, not only does she give life, but she gives a living. Not only do a real mother, a, not only does a wise mother give life, but they are able to give living. So she takes the baby. Nurses the baby as if it's her own because it is her own. Look at what God can do. God can make a way out of no way. So this baby that was hid for three months should have been killed a long time ago by Pharaoh. Pharaoh's daughter gives instruction to the mama. You go and you, not knowing, not knowing that this is the mother, you go and you nurse this baby. 
you give this baby a living. The next part of verse number nine just blows my mind. It says, and I will give you wages. <laughs> I will give you wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. Says, now look, you take your own baby. You nurse your own baby and I'm going to pay you for it. Not only does this woman receive a blessing from God that God spares the life of the baby. Not only does he spare the life of the baby in the enemy's hands, in the enemy's camp, but he, she, God also allows the mother to nurse the baby and get paid for it. Look at what God can do. Let me tell you, you need to stay with God because God can do it. You need to stay protected by God because God can do it. <clears throat> if you want your children blessed, you need to stay with God. If you want to be blessed, you need to stay with God. God is able to do it even when we don't think about it. <clears throat> yes, he's a God. He's a God that never sleeps nor slumbers. He's a God that's already working behind the scene on our behalf when we can't see what God is doing. A wise mother knows. A wise mother knows that her baby needs a life. A baby needs a living. And finally, your baby needs a legacy. But you see that preacher in verse number nine, it says the daughter, the, the daughter said to her, take the baby, take the baby and nurse it and I'm going to pay you for it. Verse number 10, it says in the, in the child grew and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. Let me just share with you. This woman has nursed this baby. The baby grew. She has nursed her own child. The baby grew, this wise mother. The baby grew. She knew the political climate that she was in. And she knew that if she had spoken up and said, no, this is my baby. She knew her baby, her child, her, her child who had grown would be killed. So rather than her say that, that this is my baby, the text declares uh, said that says that Pharaoh's daughter took her son and this son became her son. Now if there's ever a time when a woman should have spoken up, she didn't speak up when she hid him because she was saving the life of her baby. She didn't speak up when the baby was drawn from the water because she was sparing the life of her baby. Let me tell you, young girls, young women, let me just share with you. You need to make sure that you speak up at the right time and fight for your children. But there ought to be a time that you know it's time to be quiet. There ought to be a time where, when you, you will really, really, really speak up for your children. But there ought to be a time when you no longer speak up, but you keep silent. Because the idea is that your child is safe. The idea is that your child is spared. So first of all, she gave him life. A wise mother not only gives life, a wise mother gives a living. So she allowed the baby to live because she knew that Pharaoh would kill her baby. But finally, she gives him a legacy. Why you say that, preacher? Because it's right there in the text. So she called his name Moses, Pharaoh's daughter, called his name Moses because I drew him out of the water. The word Moses is mean to be drawn out in Hebrew. And the word Moses in Egyptian means to be drawn forth or drawn out of the water in Egyptian terms. So she says, that I drew him out of the water, therefore his name shall be called Moses. A wise mother, wise mothers will do whatever it takes for their children. They, they will protect their children. They will preserve their children. Wise mother will prepare their children 
not just for the future on earth, but wise mothers will prepare their children for future afterlife. Wise mothers will, will also present their children before God in a way that God is pleased and teach their children godliness. God has shut down things now. And God has allowed us to have partial stuff come up again and become open again. But God has shown us that we are not in control. He has shown us that the Pharaoh is not in control. He has shown us that God and God alone is in control. He's alone. He, he's the only one who's in control. He is God all by himself, and he is the one in control. He is in control. God is in control. God is in control in such a way that, that God has blessed us again. He has blessed us in a way that, that he, has, he has enabled us with wise mothers to see what God is really doing. Well, the reason why we have wise mothers is because we have a, the all-wise God. You see, mothers cannot be wise without an all-wise God. Mothers has a way. Mothers have a way of doing things on behalf of their children. And it is a God-like spirit that mothers have that enables them to do what they do. Because if it had not been for God, this mother wouldn't have been a wise mother. If it had not been for God, this mother wouldn't have been able to make it. If it had not been for God, this mother wouldn't have been able to do what she had done. Let me tell you, God set the ultimate example. Because of mothers being who they are, God has already set the ultimate example for mothers to follow. Yes, he did it because he wanted his children, he wanted us to be saved, he wanted us to be born again, so he took his son and gave his life for us. Over 2,000 years ago, the Father God gave his life for us on a skull hill called Calvary. Over 2,000 years ago, God gave his, his son for us. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. He died, mean men killed him. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. Jesus of Christ died that day. He died for you and he died for me. If you're going to be a wise mother, you're going to tell your children, tell somebody else's children, that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. They laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a barber tomb because early that third day morning, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. Jesus rose with all power in order to prepare a place for us. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And God is looking for us to do the right thing and accept him on planet earth that we will abide with him the rest of our days. You may be listening to me today and you've never received Jesus as your personal savior. This is your moment. This is your opportunity to get to know him. The wisest decision you will ever make is to make Jesus your Lord and your master. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus just as you are. If you have not received him, this is your opportunity to get to know him. Just believe the story that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. If you can believe this story, you can be saved right here, right now. Just trust him and just believe in him. And if you never received him, just repeat after me and invite him into your life. Would you bow your head with me and invite Jesus into your life? Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. 
believe that you died for our sins. I believe you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed that prayer, believing that Jesus, in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, you are now born again and you're on your way to heaven when you die. If you're here and you're without a church home, in between church homes, I invite you to join and become a member of the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the main attraction and the center of attention. Please inbox me, message me, and let me know that you believe that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. If you've received Jesus as your Savior, let me know that you have joined the body of Christ, been born into the body. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank God for who he is and what he has already done. And now it is offering time. It is offering time. It is offering time. It is time to give unto the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. You can give to the New Beginning Church by mailing your, your offering to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. And if you want to use our cash app, our cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls. Dollar sign or cash tag NBC Souls. You can give to our ministry in one of these fashions. Please join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. for Sunday school. Every Sunday at 1045 a.m. for our morning worship service. And also for Bible study at 7.20 p.m. on Wednesday nights. We'll be glad to have you and you'll be glad that you have come to join us. Again, thank you so much for joining us and being a part of our service. We thank you for being a part of the New Beginning Church. Again, let's thank Sister Carolyn Davis right out of the hospital who have come to worship with you this morning. Let's thank God for her for being a diligent soul in the Lord Jesus Christ. As I've said to many of you already, we're looking forward to the day that we could get back into our church and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. In the meantime, I'm asking you to continue to worship online with us through Facebook Live as well as Zoom. Not only that, I'm asking you to continue to give faithfully to the New Beginning Church as we want God's fellowship with us to be strong and that God will bless us in times like these. We want to walk with him. Don't be deceived that tithes and offering is only for paying bills. The Bible says that you're blessed when you give. Will a man rob God? Yes, we have robbed him in tithes and offering. And therefore, we'll curse with the curse this whole nation. But he says that when you bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there will be meat in my house. We will be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Continue to give faithfully and continue to worship online with us continually. Because this is the church as we know it today. And we want to continue to pray for the right move, the right time, the right situation, 
that God will call us all back together, where we can smile together, where we can wave from across the room together for a given set of period of time. We thank God for an opportunity to be blessed with him. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you for wise mothers. We thank you for mothers making decisions, mothers nourishing, and mothers being the rock of many families. We thank for God, we're thankful for God's divine wisdom in making sure that things line up and work behind the scenes. Lord, we ask you to bless us now. Bless us that we will unite the church. That we will strengthen families. We will empower neighborhoods and support schools. As we continue to lift up Jesus the Christ. Bless us now. This is our prayer. Continue to walk with us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Thank you so much. God bless you and God keep you. It is my understanding that we have some technical difficulties on Facebook Live. I see if I'm still the technician that can make it happen. And if so, I'll be posting it later on today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of the New Beginning Church service. God bless you. And God keep you. Is our prayer. Hallelujah.